AutoNation out with its second quarter results just minutes ago. The car retailer reported a slight miss on revenue, coming in just shy of the $7 billion, uh, but beat on earnings per share. Joining us now to break down the results and what he's seeing in consumer demand, Michael Manley, CEO of AutoNation. Michael, I, I hit up AutoNation, and I got to tell you, I was a little bit surprised at, at the share price, um, $122. I immediately looked at some of the recent news that says the post-pandemic or the pandemic profit boost is in the rear view mirror for auto retailers. And I, who forgot to tell uh, AutoNation, who forgot to tell the AutoNation shares that, that it's in the rear view mirror? No, exactly. I think there's uh, there's a huge amount of speculation about what's going to happen. And uh, I don't quite think we're in the rear view mirror. I think there's still a lot of positive for this year. People during the pandemic it, 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 you look, you, there's so many different stories that we could tell, but for, for cars, it was personal transportation skyrocketed. And then there were some shortages and you couldn't get cars and prices stayed firm. Are any of those things um, moderating or receding at all it, that you can tell in your business right now, Michael? No, I think on the new car side, we are continuing to see uh, supply constraints. And frankly, as you said, that's what's keeping inventory levels low, uh, margins uh, high, and turn rates very high. On the used car side, slightly different picture, to be perfectly frank. Um, if you look at price bands on used cars, $20,000 and below, there we are seeing some mitigation in demand. Now, remember, that was incredibly hot over a year ago. So we're coming off a, a, a tough year-over-year -year comp. But we are seeing some mitigation in that sub-$20,000 mark. Above that, still strong demand on used as well. It's just, uh, we've seen a reversal in a lot of the, the pandemic plays. And I just am, am kind of confused, or, or at least I don't really understand why it hasn't happened uh, in, this, in this group. I mean, for autos, when you think about it, we came into the pandemic with relatively high inventory levels. People then returned to personal transportation. You saw a big period where miles driven dropped. And obviously, that drives our after sales business. And that's all beginning to recover. People are driving again. People are out again. So our after sales business is up, which is really great news. That's a stable profit, even in a downturn. Our new vehicle business continues to be strong. And that is about that balance between supply and demand. And if you listen to the manufacturers, their forecast in terms of demand, still very tight for the balance of this year. And on the used side, we come off one of the hottest markets I've ever seen. And, you know, I think some mitigation was expected, but still opportunity to keep those used vehicles turning at reasonable margins and put that together with cost control and you get a record quarter, which I'm pleased to report. The, the product mix, you like, people like trucks, I guess, still like SUVs. What about uh, EVs? Do, do you, do you, do you participating there at all? Oh, absolutely. Now, now that you're seeing the mainstream OEMs start to deliver their full electric vehicles, the demand for, for those vehicles from key brands is very, very strong. And in fact, some of those, as you know, are sold out in the pipeline for many, many months to come. And if you think about the segments in the past when you saw gas prices breach four dollars, you saw segment shifting. We're not actually seeing much of that at this moment in time. We have seen some movement to smaller SUVs, CUVs, but not the dramatic segment shifts we've seen in the past. So EV sales interest is certainly increasing as they hit the ground. People are coming, driving them, buying those vehicles and some slight segment shifting. But outside of that, the mix is broadly, uh, broadly similar.